But first, we start with breaking new developments in the disappearance of Connecticut mother of five presumed dead, Jennifer Dulos. Good evening. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Brent Harden, live in West Hartford, where today this happened. A group of women uh, coming out here to rebuild and really rededicate this memorial to Jennifer Dulos. It was a case that, of course, captivated the entire nation. Jennifer disappearing after dropping her five children off at school in New Canaan on May 24th of 2019, just about one year ago today. And, of course, she was never seen again. As fortune would have it, there are new details coming out from police about the inve investigation into her disappearance today, and we will have that coming up. We're also hearing tonight from Michelle Traconis, Fotis Dulos' girlfriend and uh, one of the three suspects in the case who released a statement today. Fox 61's Jim Bernstein will have that. But we begin tonight with Fox 61's Matt Karen live in Farmington now with what police are revealing about the investigation tonight. Matt. Yeah, thanks, Brent. You know, there's a new home that's entered the picture here. We're talking about Skyview Drive, just about two and a half miles from here in Avon. There was a report early this morning that there was an active police investigation there, something that turned out not to be true. The police actually investigated there about a year ago after Jennifer disappeared. And, you know, while the Dulos case may have been out of the headlines for at least the past couple of months while the country has been dealing with the virus, it certainly has not been out of the hearts and the minds of the people here in the Farmington River Valley. The search to find Jennifer Dulos has taken us many places, but never here. 44 Skyview Drive, Avon, a $3 million mansion with a breathtaking view. Now owned by this man, attorney David Ford. He bought the home in 2010. Fotis and Jennifer lived here briefly while their home at Ford Jefferson Crossing was being built. When I bought the house, he was renting the, this house from the previous owner. Fast forward to 2018, a water pipe breaks inside David's home, causing a flood. He showed us the damage. See this, these orange pipes up there above your head? Yeah. Those are sprinkler pipes. Okay. One in the third floor burst. Stripped to the studs. Finished floors have to go. Subfloors are destroyed. They have to go. David hired Fotis' construction company, the Four Group, to do the demolition. Fox 61 obtaining this copy of the building permit from Avon. My caretaker said, here's a guy that builds homes. He used to live in the house. 2019 now, after Jennifer goes missing, police give David a call and ask to look around his property. No, you're not just going to look around my house. What do you want to look around for? They said, well, this is concerning the missing, you know, miss, missing Jennifer Dulos. I said, do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do, no problem. David said he met Jennifer, but couldn't sense any tension in her personal life. She seemed like a nice lady, a nice mom trying to raise a family. His most extensive interaction with Fotis Dulos came following a day of tubing with his son on the Farmington River. And ended up at the water ski place. He came by, saw us, and gave us a ride home. And that was maybe in 2012. He, he, he was okay. State police told Fox 61 they are not actively investigating the Skyview Drive home, but the search for the missing mother of five from New Canaan continues, as alleged murderous co-conspirators Michelle Traconis and Kent Mwenny await their legal fate following the January suicide of the prime suspect, Fotis Dulos. Bad enough that the parents live with the consequences, whatever they did, five kids are orphaned because of it, and that to me is the real tragedy here. And back here live out in Farmington, if you take a look behind me, you can see these two big white vans. They're blocking the private drive here at to uh, Jefferson Crossing. They've been here all day. We don't really know why, but the state police and the Farmington police say that they are in no way related to any type of investigation. It's curious. They don't have any license plates on them, but we haven't seen any people coming or going. All of this as we approach the one year anniversary of the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, which is this Sunday. Reporting live in Farmington, Matt Karen, Fox 61 News. Brent, now back to you. All right, Matt, thank you. Now to Michelle Traconis. As we said, Fotis Dulos' former girlfriend and one of three people charged in this case. She released a statement today in the form of an audio recording released through her attorney. And Fox 61's Jen Bernstein joins us with that message. Jen? 
Brent, Michelle Traconis was first arrested last June, so it's been almost a year, and she's always been relatively silent, never speaking with us, the media, going to and from court, unlike her former boyfriend, Fotis Dulos, who spoke many times to us. Uh, Michelle Traconis' lawyer did release an audio recording of a message from her today in Spanish. We have that translated in English. Listen to this. Hola, soy Michelle Troconis. My name is Michelle Troconis. For the past year, people have said many things about me, some kind, some cruel. I was advised by my lawyers to remain quiet and rely on the justice system, which is very frustrating for me because there is a lot I would wish to say. It has been nearly a year since I first heard about the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. As a mother, I am saddened for the loss that these five children have suffered being left without both parents in such a short period of time. But despite the way I have been treated by the police, I know nothing about Jennifer Dulos's whereabouts or what may have happened to her. I know that under American law, I don't have to prove my innocence, but actually to me it feels that way during all this time while under public scrutiny. To those who are quick to judge people they do not know, let me say this, it is possible to misjudge others. Whether or not Fotis Dulos was capable of doing the things the police and prosecutors accused him of doing, I do not know. But based on what I have learned in the last year, I think it was a mistake to have trusted him. Creo que fue un error haber confiado en él. Now, Michelle Traconis remains out on bond under house arrest. She does wear a GPS monitor, and she's facing serious charges, including conspiracy to commit murder, hindering prosecution, and tampering with evidence. Brent, back to you. All right, Jen, uh, thank you. And another reminder here, there is a third suspect in this case, Kent Mohinney, who is a former friend and attorney for Fotis Dulos. He is charged with conspiracy to commit murder and is still locked up at Cheshire Correctional. Uh, and on this day of developments in the Jennifer Dulos case, a small group of women from Connecticut and New York and Massachusetts gathered here at the entrance to the uh, MDC Reservoir Number 6 right off Albany Avenue here on top of the mountain to refresh and revive the memorial behind me to Jennifer Dulos, all in an effort to refresh and revive our memories of Jennifer and the case. These seven women met on Facebook on a page dedicated to justice for Jennifer. None of them knew Jennifer or the Dulos family, but the tragic story touched them all and motivated them to act. We just want everyone to know that she has not been forgotten about, and this is why we are all here. Caroline is from Farmington and regularly passes by Fotis Dulos's mansion. She still goes out searching the woods for clues from time to time. Once you hear her story and see what, how much of an amazing mother she is, it just inspires you to do everything you can to try and bring justice and closure to the situation. But the others are from other cities and states, including Manhattan and western Massachusetts. They came here today because nearly a year later, they still want justice for Jennifer. I think first and foremost is finding her, and that would give the family a little closure. All of the women who gathered here today are passionate advocates for domestic violence victims, and they hope and believe Jennifer's case will spark change. I think that's her greatest legacy, not only a mother, but that she will be able to incite change. This memorial is a way to remind the rest of us that justice has never been served in Jennifer's case. And uh, one thing the ladies wanted to point out to me today is that there is a link between what they've done here and the COVID-19 pandemic, and that is that domestic violence has really soared during the pandemic. There are money problems, people that stuck at home, uh, jobs have been lost, and they want this memorial to underscore that problem. Brent Harden, Fox 61, live in West Hartford, Ben.